Hi, welcome to Coaster Mania. I'm Micah, and today I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on Knott's Berry Farm. Don't forget to like the video and share your feedback in the comments below. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Knott's Berry Farm was the third park that Katie and I visited together. We went during the 2021 Knott's Merry Farm Festival and got to experience all of the charm that comes along with that. Fun fact, this used to be my home park. Our family mostly spent our time at Disneyland, but every once in a while we did make it a point to come out and visit Knott's. This park was opened in 1920 and was originally a chicken dinner restaurant that exploded in popularity so much that attractions were added in order to keep the restaurant visitors entertained while they waited for their seat in the Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant. This park is packed with history and it is nice to see that rather than bulldoze over everything, Cedar Fair is preserving the spirit of Knott's Berry Farm. If you're familiar with my reviews, you'll recognize the structure I'm using. I'll be breaking up my thoughts on Knott's into 10 sections. I'll go through first impressions, theming, immersion, layout, amenities, food, staff, coasters, flat rides, and finally operations. To tie everything together, I will crunch the numbers and give an average score. Section 1. First Impressions When pulling up to this park, you can't completely gain a sense for what's inside. This park is completely landlocked and is 100% developed. Around all sides of it is a fairly high wall that blocks your view in and out of the park. Upon first entering, it can kind of feel maze-like, especially with Ghost Town, but after a short time, you'll quickly find that the layout flows rather well. When you first walk in the front entrance, similar to other Cedar Fair parks, there is a B&M right at the front greeting you. This Cobra Roll from Silver Bullet certainly communicates with you what you're about to get into. This is probably the first time you'll hear me say this, but I like the front entrance of Knott's. It has a slightly Spanish-style architecture to it, and it just overall looks great. I'd give the first impressions of Knott's Berry Farm a 10 out of 10. I feel like I may just give 10s out to all the parks for this. Section 2. Theming Knott's Berry Farm is hands down the best themed Cedar Fair Park. Nothing else in the chain comes close. With the landscaping, the props, just the overall styling of this park is on a level far above anything else in the chain. I may even be willing to call this the second most well themed park in the entire state of California. From Ghost Town being the strongest to Boardwalk arguably being the weakest, even the weakest theming at Knott's is stronger than some of the other parks in this chain. A lot of the rides don't have crazy strong theming individually, but the rest of the park surely makes up for that. Overall, I'd rate the theming at Knott's a 9 out of 10. Section 3. Immersion Tying in with the theming, the immersion of Knott's is also great. Despite the fact that the park is surrounded by residential neighborhoods on all sides, you feel like you're escaping from it all. There are lots of trees, especially in Camp Snoopy, that can help block the views outside the park, and it's really only the tallest rides that let you see out of the park. This would be on Ghost Rider, Silver Bullet, Hang Time, and Accelerator. Despite this, these moments are so short, you kind of just forget about it. Knott's did a great job at keeping both Katie and I immersed. The only real detractor in this regard was the train ride. Once a train goes into the boardwalk area, you've got a solid wall on both sides of you that is somewhat bland. I understand why they did this, but it does leave a bit to be desired. There is just something magical though that even just kind of makes your mind sort of forget about this. Overall, I'd rate the immersion at Knott's a 9.5 out of 10. Section 4. Layout The layout at Knott's Berry Farm is initially confusing, but becomes easy to pick up as time goes on. The best way to describe the layout of this park is like a large oval with a bunch of connecting paths between. There's a main central path that goes from the front of the park to the back. This park isn't too big, and in fact it's quite small, so it doesn't really take very long to get anywhere from any spot in the park. Unfortunately, you won't be finding any more paper maps of this park, as they've moved to completely digital maps only. Big disappointment in my opinion. Overall, I'd rate the layout of Knott's an 8.5 out of 10. Section 5. Amenities This is one area that is helped by the layout of Knott's. Due to the fact that the park isn't too big, there isn't any real concern about not being able to find the things that you need when you do need them. There's plenty of restrooms around the park that are very well taken care of. There's tons of seating all around the park and more. All of the trees present in the park help out on a hot day and provide for much needed shade. There's plenty of snack stalls all around and more than enough accommodation for handicapped individuals to make this park enjoyable for everyone. The fact that this park is so accommodating is a great thing in my opinion. Going to theme parks, in my opinion, shouldn't be limited to just people who are able-bodied. 
Oh, and yes, you can refill your hydro flask here for free, no questions asked. With all this in mind, I'd rate the amenities at Knott's a 10 out of 10. Section 6. Food. This is a fairly strong aspect of this park. It has Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant, the whole reason why the park is even open. The food here was great, and I can see why an entire theme park was open from this place. In fact, I wouldn't even consider it theme park food, it's just good food on its own. Seriously, if you're going to Knott's, you're missing out by not going here. Other than this, there was a Panda Express in the park, which is exactly what you'd expect. Then we also found another place in Fiesta Village called the Cantina. If you prefer eating lighter, this place is great for that. They serve tacos here, which come in two small tacos with beans, and they tasted fresh. The rest of the food at the park was about what you'd expect at any other theme park. Generic, greasy, kind of gut-bombing theme park food. Yum. Despite that, overall, I'd rate the food at Knott's a 9.5 out of 10. The chicken dinner restaurant is amazing! Section 7. Staff. This section is going to be super short. There really isn't anything notable I have to say about the staff here. Operations on some of the rides are definitely way too slow for what they should be, but everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves for the most part. We didn't run into any bad experiences with anyone and didn't notice any staff members having too bad of a time. We at least had a few staff members who made sure that we were enjoying ourselves. I'd rate the staff an 8 out of 10. Section 8. Coasters. Knott's has a really wide spread of good rides and not so good rides. With the best being arguably Ghost Rider and some of the not so great rides in Coast Rider and Pony Express, there is a really wide distribution of quality on display. Silver Bullet is one of Katie's favorite inverts since she isn't a huge fan of the ones that are forceful and whippy. This one strikes the right balance for her in being thrilling but tame enough to be enjoyable for her. Ghost Rider is an elite tier coaster. The airtime and laterals this provides are great. Also great is the diving through the thick support structure during this ride, but with that, there's the painful shin guards on Coast Rider, and then the awkward restraint on Pony Express. There is a lot of good, but also a few not so good here. One of the limiting factors with this park is the lack of space. A few of the rides are quite literally built on top of each other to make up for the lack of space available. This does also mean that some of the rides go right over path and within various sections of the park. I feel like this does help though, since this means that you're not just going over an empty field of grass like many other rides throughout the country. Overall, I'd rate the coasters at Knott's an 8.5 out of 10. Section 9. Flat Rides Even with the limited space, Knott's has a fairly solid lineup of flat rides. Sure there is the typical scrambler and observation tower and drop towers. Katie and I discovered one of our second favorite flat ride types here, the Top Scan Ride by Mondial Rides. This is known as Soul Spin at Knott's and is located in Fiesta Village. These rides flip you around in so many different ways you won't even know which way is up after getting off. Arguably everyone's favorite flat ride at this park has to be Supreme Scream. This is an SNS Turbo Drop and originally opened as the world's tallest. This ride seemingly has a reputation of being the big scary ride at Knott's so you have to be brave enough to ride. These drop tower rides are fun for me. Other than this, Knott's has everything else you could expect and more. Overall, I'd rate the flat rides at Knott's a 10 out of 10. Section 10, Operations. The operations of Knott's are its weakest aspect. I'm not sure if it's due to the training or the attitude of the local population, but the write-ups at this park do not have a whole lot of hurry to their steps. I'm not sure if this is something that will likely ever be improved. You see, Knott's isn't really a coaster enthusiast theme park. It's more of a theme park designed for the whole family that leans towards providing a good experience for everyone, regardless of age. This doesn't really excuse the poor operations, however, because if you look at a park like Dollywood, which is the closest non-seater fair park to what Knott's is, the operations there are consistently top tier. I'd rate the operations at Knott's a 6 out of 10. Knott's Berry Farm is a great park and arguably one of the best seater fair parks. It may not have the best coasters in the chain, and it definitely doesn't have the best operations of any theme park. What it does have is an overall great experience. Just about every other aspect of this park works together to ensure that you have a great time while you're there. Just as I would for both Kings Island and Cedar Point, I'd highly recommend any coaster enthusiast or theme park aficionado make a trip out to visit this park. While you do that, there are a bunch of other parks in the area to visit too. Moving through the individual ratings of this park, I gave First Impressions a 10 out of 10, Theming a 9 out of 10, Immersion a 9.5 out of 10, Layout an 8.5 out of 10, Amenities a 10 out of 10, Food a 9.5 out of 10, Staff an 8 out of 10, The Coasters an 8.5 out of 10, Flat Rides a 10 out of 10, and finally Operations a 6 out of 10, which averages to about 8.9 out of 10. 
Considering that this is 0.2 points lower than the average of Kings Island is pretty spot on to our feelings. This is an incredibly strong park, but the coaster collection and the operations are two aspects of Kings Island that, in my opinion, help it push ahead just slightly. This park is seriously great and I can't wait to visit again in the near future. Thank you so much for watching this review of Knott's Berry Farm. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, feel free to leave a like and comment below and consider subscribing. I intend on uploading more content as time goes on, and as Katie and I experience more parks and coasters. You can also find daily uploads on our Instagram page at Coastermania. Soon we will be opening an Etsy page where you'll be able to buy prints and more of some of your favorite coaster photography of ours. Thanks for watching the video and ride on, Coaster Maniacs! Yeah.